The FCC certification for the DJI Pocket 4 has finally appeared, and that's one of the strongest signs that the launch is just around the corner. DJI has a very predictable pattern. Once a product shows up in FCC filings, the official reveal usually happens within a few weeks. Because of this, many people believe the Pocket 4 could be announced around December 18, 2025, especially for creator-focused products like the Pocket series. The biggest shock from all the leaks so far is the dual camera setup. This isn't just a rumor from one source. Multiple leaks, hands-on videos, and trusted insiders have all shown the same design. That makes it very likely that the dual camera system is real, and it would be the biggest change ever introduced to the pocket line. Early sensor rumors claim we might see a 1 inch or 1 over 1.1 inch sensor combined with a variable aperture between f2 and f4. This would be a massive upgrade for image quality. However, putting a big sensor and a variable aperture inside such a tiny 3-axis gimbal is extremely difficult. If DJI manages to pull this off, it would be a huge engineering achievement. Some leaks mention the possibility of 6K 60 frames per second video, but this comes with questions. To achieve that resolution and frame rate, DJI might need to crop the image or deal with heating issues. The Pocket 3 already pushed its limits with 4K performance, so 6K is exciting, but not guaranteed. FCC documents also revealed a new 1,545 milliamp hour battery, jumping from the Pocket 3's 1,300 milliamp hour. With a dual camera system, a bigger battery is absolutely necessary. Along with that, leaks talk about improved internals, faster processing, and a slightly taller body. There may even be new quick control buttons for easier operation. Some rumors suggested a second screen, but it's likely just a small information display, not a full preview screen. Another interesting possibility is a 360-degree panning gimbal head, which would allow much more freedom when shooting. There's also another possible reason DJI might be moving quickly this time. The US has been discussing stricter import rules related to DJI products. If those rules become real, getting the Pocket 4 out early would be a smart move to avoid delays. Overall, the Pocket 4 sounds like DJI's most ambitious pocket ever. If even 80% of these leaks turn out to be true, this could be a breakthrough device. For now, it's best not to buy a Pocket 3. The next big upgrade is almost here. Who the Neo 2 is actually designed for? The first thing to understand is that the Neo 2 is built for a very particular audience. DJI kept the same 12 megapixel 1 half inch sensor from the original Neo, and while that might sound disappointing at first, it actually makes complete sense once you see what the drone is meant to do. This is essentially a selfie drone, a quick B-roll drone, and a travel companion for creators who want fast, effortless footage rather than cinematic masterpieces from 400 feet in the air. If you're a blogger or solo creator who constantly needs follow me shots, the Neo 2 delivers exactly that. Families wanting easy vacation clips? Perfect match. Casual sports users looking for something that can track a run, a bike ride, or a simple adventure? The Neo 2 shines there too. It performs best in urban environments, between buildings, under tree lines, and in tight spaces where larger drones struggle. It isn't meant for long distance exploration, this drone lives and performs best close to you. Who should avoid the Neo 2? On the flip side, if you're someone who buys drones for pure image quality, high altitude cinematic shots, or long battery life, this isn't your drone. It won't give you mini 5 Pro level results, and it isn't a cheaper alternative to that drone either. It's not built for harsh wind conditions, heavy lifting, or high vantage filmmaking. Anyone expecting professional-grade aerial cinematography will walk away disappointed. DJI clearly didn't design the Neo 2 for that market. Performance and flight experience. One of the biggest talking points is battery life. Expect around 13 to 16 minutes depending on how aggressively you fly and what features you're using. But push it into strong winds or fly it too high, and that number drops fast. Keep it low, keep it in sheltered environments, 
and the Neo 2 performs beautifully. The real surprise is the new omnidirectional obstacle avoidance system. With rear cameras and front LiDAR sensors, the Neo 2 does a shockingly good job reading its surroundings. Tracking is smooth and natural, especially at slower speeds, and for a drone this tiny, that alone feels like magic. Push it too hard and the avoidance algorithm can fail, but the drone's frame is built for bumps, with protective structures around the sensors and camera. Gesture and voice controls. One of the most fun upgrades is gesture control. It actually works, almost like using the force. Raise your hand and the drone rises. Pull your palm closer and it approaches. The glowing blue front light gives immediate confirmation that it's reading your movements. There's even a palm landing feature that feels far more practical than expected. Voice commands through the phone app add another layer of quick control, making the Neo 2 feel more intuitive and accessible than most DJI drones.